The next part of the visual examination involves the use of the ophthalmoscope, which can generally be found on the wall hanging here with a cord to a machine here that generates the energy for the light. Once the ophthalmoscope is taken off the wall, the light is automatically turned on and there's no need to adjust it here. Um, to adjust for your own specific vision, there is a dial on the ophthalmoscope that you can turn, look through it, and adjust to your own ability to see. And once you're done with it, it can be placed back here. Also on the same wall is the otoscope, and this also generates a light source once taken off the machine. All right, the next part of the visual examination includes the fundoscopic exam of the eye, that is the back of the eye where the retina resides. The first thing it, that is important is to turn off the lights in the room to make sure that the patient has sufficient uh, ability to dilate the pupil. Um, next, the ophthalmoscope is taken from the wall. The light is already on. I have focused it to my visual acuity. And now I'm going to ask Jason if you could just look off at the picture on the wall and just keep your vision focused there. I'm going to put a light in your eye and just keep your eyes focused on the wall, if you would. I first, when examining the right eye, I use my right eye. I place the ophthalmoscope in my right eye and I approach the patient and I examine the temporal aspect first. And then I can examine the nasal aspect of the retina. Coming in closer, I'm looking at the vessels in the back of the eye, following them to the optic disc and cup, and making sure those are all where they should be, and that they look appropriate, and that the cup is sharp and the disc is sharp. Going to the other eye, I use my left eye to examine his left eye in the same manner. Coming in, examining the nasal portion, and then going to the temporal portion. Again, looking at the vessels, the disc, and the cup.